High Education 4P28. Today, we will be discussing moral literacy. This is your next 21st century skill to incorporate in your future classrooms. We hope that this presentation will provide you with the necessary tools for your own understanding. Presenting to you today are five of your colleagues, Amy McCleary, Cassie Russell, Kelly Craig, Megan Catry, and Shannon Fisher. So now that we have you here, I bet you're wondering, what are morals? By definition, morals are rules that govern which actions are right and which are wrong. A moral can be for all of society or for an individual's beliefs. For example, responsibility, integrity, and honesty are all great morals. Then how does this connect to moral literacy? Moral literacy is a set of practical skills and abilities that enables one to identify, articulate, and respond to ethical challenges. We will put this definition in a frame because it's pretty important for our presentation. So now let's talk about the three important elements of moral literacy. First, ethical sensitivity. Second, ethical decision-making skills. Third, ethical motivation. Each of these key elements are so important to understanding the incorporation of moral literacy in your teaching. But why must we think of this as a 21st century skill? As society and technology change, so does literacy. Because technology has increased the intensity and complexity of digitally literate environments, the 21st century demands that a literate person possess a wide range of abilities, competencies, and skills. In our case, they must become literate in navigating moral dilemmas that they are exposed to in reality and on these screens. Moving forward, this 21st century literacy is not alone in being interconnected. As we just mentioned, moral literacy is incorporated in digital literacy. However, some other key literacies that are connected are multicultural literacy and critical literacy. As described in Mirana Bajovic's 2011 article, critical literacy is questioning received knowledge and experience in relation to morals, which is being tolerant and compassionate about the differences expressed while critically analyzing. Further, moral, multicultural literacy is connected to moral literacy as we live in a diverse society that incorporates many cultures into the classroom. We must be sensitive to moral values and consider whose values we are teaching. So how can we incorporate this into our future classrooms? Moral literacy is indirectly taught through the hidden curriculum. However, this tends to be highly biased and taught without consciousness. Thus, to incorporate moral literacy in a more formal setting, the use of moral storytelling has been employed. This can involve reading a scenario and discussing with your students the multiple perspectives to take on this dilemma. So, why don't we do it? If you weren't paying any attention before, here is where you should. Brendan was in third grade when he was caught cheating on his math quiz. He had been doing poorly in math and his parents had threatened to that if he didn't raise his grades, they would not let him play on the baseball team. So, he cheated. When the teacher asked him about it, he denied it at first but finally admitted to writing down the answers ahead of time. A parent conference was called and Brendan had to sit with his parents, the teacher, and the principal to discuss the school policy on cheating and lying. On the way home, his father told Brendan he was deeply disappointed in him and expected more from him in the future. That night, Brendan felt like the whole world was against him, but he also felt guilty for letting his parents down. That weekend, Brendan and his family went to a movie. When they got to the ticket window, Brendan's dad asked for two children's tickets for both Brendan and his 16-year-old brother. Brendan looked over at his brother who stared down at the sidewalk and hunched his shoulders hoping that the ticket seller would not notice that he was well above the age for a child's ticket. The 
the ticket seller glanced suspiciously back and forth between the father and the brother, and then, with a doubtful look on her face, she handed them the two child's tickets. This happened every time they went to the movies, and it always made Brendan feel weird. On the way home from the movie, Brendan asked his father, Why is it okay to lie and cheat the theater out of money, but not allow him to cheat on his math? His dad responded, Sometimes it's okay to lie as long as nobody gets hurt. The rest of the way home, Brendan just got more and more confused. Cheating on his test hurt nobody. He didn't steal the answers from any other students. If he hadn't gotten caught, he, had, he would have been praised. How was that any different from what his dad did over and over again? And should he continue to stay silent the next time his dad lied?